Uh, yeah, I first met Barry Sheen at uh, Brands Hatch, and it was just a club race event. He was obviously my hero at the time. It's probably one of the reasons I got into to motorcycle racing, and probably thousands of others for that matter. Um, but it was a, a meeting called Stars of Tomorrow at Brands Hatch. I was riding a 250 Yamaha, and he was brought along as one of the judges on the day. And there was a load of people from the Autocycle Union and the club, and and um, I thought I should have won that uh, trophy, a Star of Tomorrow trophy, because I, I did the 250 race, the 350 race, 500 race, all on this little 250 Yamaha, and won every race. Thought, oh, I've won it, and um, for some reason I finished up second. I reckon there were some bent judges in there, but Barry came up to me afterwards and said, I thought you should have won that, and um, we kind of got chatting. He lived down in Wisbeach at the time, and I was living near Cambridge. Uh, and yeah, and that's how we really first got to know one another, and then I started going down and seeing him down at his place at Wisbeach. Um, but yeah, we had a, a lot of fun, and, and I was always the one that seemed to get the blame. It was always Stavros, the bloody practical joker, but half the time it was Barry Sheen um, setting things up. He wanted to have fun, and I'd take the rap. Um, I remember one particular occasion, which not that many people know about, but, um, well, they know about him losing his finger. He lost his little finger at Paul Ricard riding one of these, actually, Yamaha. And they tried to stick it back on, and they stuck a skewer in it, and they sewed it all back on and everything else. But it never really, really took, and so finally he had it amputa amputated at the end of one season, it must have been 82, 81, 82. So I'm down at Charwood where he lived, down at his nice manor house there, having Sunday lunch that Stephanie had cooked, nice roast beef, Yorkshire puddings and all the trimmings and everything else. But just as I went to tuck into my second Yorkshire pudding, there was his finger underneath my Yorkshire pudding that he'd carefully slid under there. There, Funnily enough, I lost my appetite after that. But it just, yeah, the story sort of went on and on. I remember going to the Nürburgring to learn the circuit uh, there. We'd borrowed a Rolls-Royce from Crew. He didn't want to knacker his own car, so he decided that uh, his needed a service and they'd lend him another one. So off we went down to the Nürburgring to learn it. And we drove round the 13-mile circuit, lap after lap after lap, trying to learn this track. And finally, this poor old Rolls-Royce, which was about six months old and had 3,000 miles on the clock, was absolutely knackered. The brakes had gone, the tyres had gone. And the Germans couldn't believe what they were seeing because there they were in their little sports cars and motorbikes going. There was this monstrous great big Rolls-Royce on two wheels with two giggling idiots in it flying around um, and doing that. But yeah, the stories went on and on and half the time uh, they're unrepeatable at what, what went on, but they'll always be strong memories for me. Uh, yeah, it seems really sad being here at Scarborough without Barry because over the years of racing together we always came up here and had a lot of fun. But just two years ago, um, we came up to this same event um, and Barry had borrowed a big uh, Augusta 109 helicopter from his mate. He picked me up at my house and we flew up here to come to this event. He was riding a Kajiva at the time and I was going to ride, I think, this Yamaha. Anyway, we couldn't find the hotel. We flew up to Scarborough here looking for the hotel. Looked around, the fuel gauge was going down on this helicopter and we needed to land fairly quickly. So uh, it was Barry that said, oh, there it is. That's the hotel over there. So we lowered this helicopter down, big eight-seater helicopter. And I looked out the window and I thought, I don't know, something's not right here. There's all these old people looking at us. We ended up landing on the bowling green of the Miners Union Retirement Home, much to the disgust of the gardener who was screaming and waving and shouting. So I ran in there and said, is this the Ray Head Hotel? Which sure enough it wasn't. They said, no, this is the Miners Union Retirement Home. The gardener's shouting, yeah, and you've landed on my bloody bowling green and wrecked it. And then one of these guys in a wheelchair said, is that Arthur in the helicopter? They thought it was Arthur Scargill come to visit them and everything else. So it was hilarious. And I was pissing myself laughing actually, um, ran back in a helicopter and we went and finally found the hotel but it was a great weekend up here and there's a lot of fans and so many people are coming up to me this weekend and going ah oh, such a shame, such a tragedy and how we miss him and um, yeah he was a unique man there's no question about it.